we, we're all here. So we've got a quorum and then some, so we're good. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So we're good. Everybody got a copy? I got mine. We're a minute or two early. Is that all right since we have a quorum? One minute or two. Yeah, we're good? Okay. Well, let me call the meeting to order. This is the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. Um, and I want to make sure that um, everybody knows we're starting at 1.29 uh, p.m. Mountain Time. If uh, you would, please turn off your cell phones at this time or put them on vibrate, okay? And so I'm gonna have staff read the opening statement. The Sony Board of Adjustment of the City of El Paso is now in session for Monday, January 9th, 2023. This board is established under Article 211.008 of the Texas Local Government Code and Chapter 2.16 of the El Paso Municipal Code. In appropriate cases, I'm subject to appropriate conditions and safeguards. This board is empowered to make special exceptions or grant variances to the terms of the zoning ordinance that are consistent with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance and in accordance with any applicable rules contained in the ordinance. Your application will be decided only after you have had the opportunity to present evidence before the board for its consideration. Other parties interested in your case may also be heard at this time. No consultation among board members has been held in advance regarding your case. This board does not act in an arbitrary manner. You may feel that this application of the zoning ordinance or smart code to your situation will result in a hardship to you but, that, but this does not mean that this board has the power to grant you relief unless the facts of your case are such that the board must act on them. You may be sure full consideration will be given to your case and following this hearing, you'll be, you will be promptly notified of the board's decision. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna ask that we start over on my my right uh, to introduce yourselves, please, both uh, staff and board. Joel Muniz, Planning and Inspections. Russell Ablin, Assistant City Attorney. Oh, Luis Zamora, Planning and Inspections. Marcia Heller. Uh, Marcia Heller, District 4. Hi, Adrian Morales. Justin Bass. Isaac Rodriguez. Don Luciano. Ray Adalto. Maritza Perez. Andrew Salone with Planning Inspections. Everybody, that's good. City Attorney. We good? All right, everybody's here. All right. Um, Will everybody who's giving testimony today, if you are giving testimony here present, please uh, raise your right hand. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna ask you that if you uh, would plan to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yes? Yes, okay, good, thank you. Anybody online at this point? Is our um, online services up and running? Yes? Okay, anybody online, if you are gonna be chiming in, uh, you need to know that it's star six to unmute, and we ask you to stay muted until the case that you're uh, going to plan to talk about if you are either interested in that particular um, case or not. Uh, please raise uh, your, your voice by hitting star six. Star six will give you uh, access to our uh, meeting here. Is there any uh, changes in the... Uh, in the agenda, staff. Luis Zamora, uh, no changes as the, at, at this moment. Good, okay. Um, since we don't have any changes, we don't have to ask for any approval, correct? Correct. 
All right, so let's start off with our first case. Okay, well, good afternoon again. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, Luis Zamora with Planning and Inspections. So item one, it's a uh, request for a special exception B, two or more non-conforming lots. This is for the property located at 5107 Raymond Jays. Uh, this item has been postponed in the past, so this time is the first time you're gonna hear it. Uh, but again, it's been notified uh, a couple of months ago. Here we have a, a map and aerial of the subject property. Here we have the zoning map. Uh, current zoning for the property and surrounding properties is R4 residential. Here we have a site plan of the subject property. Uh, again, the, the applicant is requesting a special exception B, uh, two or more non-conforming properties. Uh, this is to legalize a, a rear uh, encroachment as well as a side encroachment. Um, the proposal of the applicant is to build a um, carport on the side of the house, which is located uh, well, on, the, on the side plan, you can see here on the right, the first structure to the right, besides the main house. That's the carport that's proposed to be built. Uh, this is creating an issue, an encroachment for the rear uh, structure as well. So besides this proposed carport encroaching to the side setback of five feet, uh, given that it is closer than five feet to the main structure and then to the other structure at the rear, uh, is creating all, all this issue for the rear one. So the rear uh, structure uh, on the top right is necessitating a, uh, an exception for the side setback as well as for the rear. Uh, in addition, I wanna point out, you can see here the subportion that extends farther than the property line. Um, this property is, it's an old property, it's prior to zoning. Um, there's also an easement. All this has been in existence for a long time. So we don't really have, a, we can allow it to stay on the easement. And now with the issue encroaching to the, the other property, um, that will be a civil matter. If, you know, that will be something to be discussed or, between the neighbors. Because at this moment, this been, has been like this for a long time. Um, so we don't really have an issue with that one for now. Uh, we we'll can let it, the neighbors uh, deal with that one. Um, there, there's also an issue of, of the, this bu building at the rear encroaching to the neighbors to the right. Uh, that's a roof encroachment that uh, yeah, you'll see on the picture. So I wanted to get clarify all this before. So here's a subject property from the front of one story. Oh, again, the, the, the encroachment will be on the side, on the right, the side setback. Here we have a look at the, this is the structure that's already there, that's located all the way to the rear. Um, so again, because of the proposed carport, uh, being less than five feet to the main structure, and then to this one, everything is considered uh, part of the, uh, as a main structure, and thus encroaching to the side setback. So again, it's just five feet, and you can see here the roof uh, overhang that goes into the neighbor's property on the right. This is another view of that structure. Uh, again, all, all that's highlighted in red on the left, that's, that will be considered an encroachment to the rear well, with the other one on the side. And then this is from the, from the rear looking to a side. So a portion of this, again, is what's encroaching to the neighbors at the rear and again, it's all been there for a, a long time, uh, as well as, you know, a uh, portion of this being into uh, over an, an easement, and you can see the power lines on the top, uh, which runs along the easement. Now the proposal is for this carport, which is highlighted in red, approximate location and area of 430, 434 square feet. So this is a proposal. They wanna build a carport, um, so a portion of this is in, will be encroaching into the side setback. Uh, and again, because of this, it's creating a nonconformity for that rear structure as well. Otherwise, the rear uh, structure really is permitted as it is. 
uh, again, this is going through a special exception B to all more non-conforming properties, so it necessitates at least two other non-conforming properties that are the same or even uh, more non-conforming. So we have identified two on the same block. The first one at 5119 Raymond Jays, uh, you can see here on the aerial, uh, encroaches into the side setback of five feet as well as the rear. Uh, all these structures are attached, creating the nonconformity for this property. And then the second property is at 5129 Raymond Jays. Uh, same thing with this property, everything's attached, seems to be a carport, maybe an accessory at the rear, but at the end it encroaches into the side and the rear. Notices were mailed to property owners within 200 feet on November 3rd, 2022. Again, just as a reminder, this case has been postponed previously. That's why the, the notices, you know, they, they were sent in November. Uh, as of January 5th and as of today, we have only received one phone call in opposition. We do have the, the person who called in opposition here today, so we can hear about that. Um, but that, that's it. So our recommendation, we recommend approval. Um, this request meets the criteria of a special exception B. There's at least two other non-conforming properties. Uh, it does meet, to a certain extent, all the requirements for zoning, uh, and that's why we're recommending approval today. It's Thank you, Luis. All right. Um, board, do you have any questions for staff? I do have a question. Sure, Justin. Uh, is there really a requirement to reach out to the utility company or who might need to use that easement? And have they discussed this or considered what's going on in that piece of so, property? Yes. So it's not a requirement. We don't really reach out to them. Um, so we're not. Sh yeah. I mean, we're not sure what they think. Now, obviously, they will need to go through the permitting process to legalize everything which at that point may be, they may be required something to, to reach out. But the big thing with, with the Eastman is that the structure has been there for a long time uh, prior to zoning. So um, basically so we, e we can Explain that it. to me, if you would, and to the board. What do you mean prior to zoning? Where where did this property come from? What it, was it totally non-city? Uh, non was it annexed? What, what's the deal? So I don't want to provide uh, incorrect information. So I believe, because I, I need to confirm again. I can't remember everything. Um, but I believe this property has been like this prior to 56, 1956. Um, the city adopted the modern zoning code uh, in, in basically at the end of 55. Uh, so basically we look into anything prior to 56, you know, uh, because there, the zoning uh, code wasn't adopted yet. Uh, and some regulations were in effect, basically can allow them to say as it as they are. Um, typically, we require that property owners register their property with the city as legal non-conforming, meaning that they do not comply with zoning, but they will be considered legal because of this, because they were in existence prior to the zoning code. Um, in this instance, what we can do to legalize it is going to CVA because it will be just the encroachment. Um, so basically, can allow it to stay there, uh, just legalizing the encroachment, which is what the board can allow. So the properties that you were showing on either side of the house, particularly the one on that's got the, the little roof area literally over the, the wall, um, that's a civil matter. So if we legalize it, does that mean what does it mean, I guess, is what I'm asking. So what we'll be legalizing will be whatever it's within the property. Obviously, we cannot legalize whatever extends. Okay. Um, but we really can't uh, enforce anything that's more like a civil dispute between the neighbors. Um, I think, from what I remember, I had discussed this with the owner. Um, so a little uh, information there. Uh, he said he had reached out to the to that neighbor, and they agreed that everything was fine. Um, it's always been there, as far as they know, since they you know since they own the property, it's always been inherited as that. Um, but again, going back to your question, the city really doesn't have any overview about you know it, it, 
we can make them comply. If the neighbors, you know, between them, they're okay with it, then we can allow it. As far as they comply with what's within the property that we're looking at, uh, and at this moment we'll be looking into the rear setback, which they have something that encroaches. Where exactly is District 3? I don't recall. You have a zip code here somewhere? Oh, 03? Timberwolf, okay. I'm seeing the, yeah, it's over by Loretto. Wow. So per, uh, per the request for the zoning board of adjustment, Done. we don't really require the design, only a site plan. So we don't really have an, anything. We don't know what's gonna look like, just the, the square footage, and then obviously the approximation of the location. But they won't be allowing water to drain into the neighbor's yard. What? So typically we don't allow it. Yeah, you obviously. don't allow it. Exactly. Under they will have to put gutters. Yeah, to, so the water stays. I can see the complaint there, mm -hmm. where the water's coming off the roof now and going into their yard. That's, that's a big thing to me. Okay, I got it. Yeah, it's a little complicated for this board, I think. You know, and that's that sad part is is that it's clear that there's some um, violations, including the utility. That's what really, really kind of worrisome. Is the whole is the whole neighborhood that way? I mean, from what I from the other two non-conforming properties, uh, I'm not entirely sure again. But okay. I believe the easement runs along the rear of all of them. Um, let me see if I can get the. IT, can you please uh, share the screen? There you go, thank you. So it probably runs along the rear, uh, five foot for each property on, on you know this side and then the other one. So it probably runs, you know, we have multiple properties that look to have some accessory structures besides those two properties we, uh, we called out that have, you know, basically are encroaching. Um, so I believe that's the way it was. Uh, obviously they'll have the easement, but they probably uh, built uh, and again, may have been prior to to the code having uh, not allowing such um, structures. But uh, at this point, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so we don't have any aerials, earlier aerials like we do in other cases where it'll show the development prior to whatever, whatever year. We've got some that go back a long time. Yeah, so we don't have one. I don't have one to show you. Uh, okay. We can look into into that, um, but right now I don't have anything to show you during this presentation. Okay, anybody else have anything for Luis? But we think the power lines were there long, there long, there long, 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 long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the power lines are probably have been there also when they started uh, building. Else. Board members, is the uh, owner or a representative here today? Are you the owner, sir? Please, please step up and uh, introduce yourself, if you would, please, sir. Yes, I am Jerry Swoblin, and I moved here from Michigan. Okay. To get away from all the humidity. <laughs> um, I have found out since I've been here that Patricia, the gal that owned my house, she bought it in 67. The one at 5109, uh, there was somebody in it. Another party was moved into it. And then a Mormon family moved into it. And everything was okay with the roof at that time. And then when Edel bought it in about 70, in the middle 70s, I was told. <coughs> she, Edel told me that she had signed a letter and I'm assuming it went to the uh, the realtor that was there because they said they needed a okay for the roof be in her property, and she signed it. Uh, I have modified and the uh, okay, the roof is going to be like this. The ribs are going to be running down my driveway, so all the water from the carport is gonna go run downhill 
into my driveway. None of it is going to be going. So over. let me get this straight. Your plan design does not encroach over that rock wall that we saw? No. Will not? Will not encroach over it? No. Okay. The edge, of the, the property line is her side of the wall. The peak of the wall is where the roof is going to end because of the overhang, six inch overhang. It's an American steel building. And I'm putting in a, a horizontal roofing, which means the beads run lengthways. I was going to put in a 30 foot carport, but I've reduced it down to 30, 20 feet. And it was going to be 11 feet high. And I've reduced that down to eight feet. So the peak of the roof is approximately at the east end of the carport is right at chain length fence height. So when she comes to her back door, she's looking over, the, she's, her head, I think, is above the chain length fence. So her view is above my roof, which still gives her a view of the star on the mountain. Okay, questions? <clears throat> I have a question, Isaac Rodriguez here. Uh, <clears throat> The existing structure will remain, the one in the corner? The, the rear, The rear structure that we saw in the photo, that remains? I'm, I'm not The little house towards the back, because that portion does have overhang that discharges water into. Yeah, yeah. So I know that the new roof, or the new carport, won't encroach into your neighbor's property. No, no, no. no. But the existing uh, rear structure, that will the remain? Studio. The, the roof on the studio, which is about, about 40 feet long, was there when Patricia bought the house and was like that when I bought the house. And as I said, when Ed Edel told me when she bought the house that she had to sign an agreement that that protrusion over into her property was okay. And she says she was young and little and everything else and no, no, no problems until now. But that hasn't seemed to be the problem. She does not want me to block her view in any way. That seems to be the big problem, not the roof. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much for coming up. Um, we said that we had somebody here in opposition, or, okay, thank you. Yes? I, I'm gonna have to have a microphone given to her. She's, she, she would have a hard time standing if you, would just move a microphone over to her, please. Here we go. Okay. You can stay there, ma'am. You can stay there. Okay. Can please, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, you, you would introduce yourself. Sit down. Sit down there. there we go. Okay, here you go. Put your glasses on. Well, can you give us your name and your address, please, yes, ma'am? My name is uh, Edelmira Trujillo. Mr. Trujillo. And I live at 5109 Raymond Gate. Okay. And, um, I am opposed to his extension. And in a letter that was sent to me concerning the Mr. Sutherland's request to legalize the extension of the existing structures. And I, I'm against that, and I'm here to oppose the extension, which begins in a, the structure behind the main structure. And this uh, has been, uh, let's see, because the existing structure has been. He proposes a, a metal, metal. May, may I read it? Uh, you know, I, okay, I'm gonna, I can't read it. May, uh, may I read it for her, please? Sure, yes, we would introduce yourself, ma'am. My name is, uh, my name is Rebecca Dominguez, and I am her sister. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Dominguez. I'm going to read what she wrote okay. and, and, and directly. That's fine. Um, she says, I am here in regards to a letter sent to me concerning Mr. Swavlin's request to legalize the extension of an existing structure. I am here today to strongly oppose this extension. 
I, I'm speaking, in speaking to Mr. Samaniego on the phone, I was told that this extension could not be built unless I gave my consent because the existing structure's roof extends into my property. Mr. Sorvland proposes a metal roofed structure to begin in front of his existing rear property and extend 30 feet. The new structure will be in very close proximity to my property. In my opinion, the proximity to my property will devalue it greatly and will affect my daily life as well. We have, uh, we have pictures to share with you, but I, I noticed that you all had pictures of, of the two yards and how closely they are together. Um, but uh, that's what she had wanted you to know. Yeah. She also wanted you to know that the, the consent that she gave years ago, and by the way, she, uh, she bought her home way back in the 70s, uh, maybe 75, 74, 1975, 75. I bought it in 1975. And, and uh, the consent that she gave to the then owner was after he had built this, um, he had remodeled this back uh, structure of his, and he had done the roof in that way that it fell, uh, that it encroached, in encroached into her property. So he needed my permission for the, for the, for the company, then, for the city then to ap approve. And I, I was living in California, but the city sent me a form to, to say that I approved, and, it, uh, and I did it at that time. That's when it became, uh, the roof became, belong, belongs par partly to, to me. In other words, his, that part of the roof belongs to me because of that, that move that I made that, that he wanted. <laughs> So, um, Mr. Trujillo, then the bottom line is, is that you're the owner of the property that we see on the right hand side of the picture looking down the proposed driveway and the front of the additional dwelling unit, as we call it now. We used to call it mother-in-law rooms, but is that correct? He's the owner of the, of the property. property on the right. Okay. Okay. Can you bring us, you have some pictures of a view from that house? We have, we have some pictures to show you. We'd like to see those. Um, I have a question on the existing structure that overhangs um, is it negatively affecting you right now? I mean, is that part of the reason why you're not wanting the carport? Okay. Uh, she, she has not been bothered by the, uh, by the water that has uh, come down uh, when it rains from that part of the roof because it's so far back. Her her property, her backyard, is quite long towards the back. And so the eaves are towards the back. This new structure is, what is bothering her is that it's, it, it's, it's right by her kitchen, right by her den, so that's what she's afraid of there. But the old eaves have not bothered because it has been so far back away from her home. Thank you, and I think I heard you guys say that um, part of that was also, you're thinking it might obstruct the view, right? Um, the carport, like it would be really close, but also it's gonna block some of your view, is that right? Well, at this point, it's going to be right where her kitchen window is, right where her den door is. And uh, as you can see, she's, uh, she's not very mobile, and so she does, she stays watching TV at her den a lot, and she opens a door, uh, and just uh, there will be that uh, structure right, right, uh, right in front of her. Invasive. Okay. She calls it an invasive structure. Thank you. Any other questions for Mrs. Trujillo or Ms. Dominguez? 
Thank you both for coming back. I know that you were here last time we were here, and I appreciate you being here. All right, staff, so. Uh, I got one more for staff. Sure. The white building we're looking at, were you, did you take these pictures? So were these were taken by staff, not personally me. Oh, the, you mean the, this the, white? the storage on the left? Not, well, the, the, the garage in the back or whatever, where the garage doors open. Yeah. Does he have access to that? driveway or to the backyard or not I mean, I'm, I'm just curious about it looks to me like the, the land drops down about three feet you know looking at yeah so I'm not entirely sure if he has access where he's getting access um, there's no alley on the rear so there's no access from the rear so it has to be from the front either from he, you know this side I don't know if there's a gate and he can answer it if needed. Um, or Looks like there might have been had there had the uh, rock wall not been there, but the site plan is showing a rock wall blocking that now, that access. Exactly. So I don't know whether so you know, he's using it for vehicles or it's just for storage. At this point, then that rock wall, is it new? Mr. Sloveland, is, it, is the rock wall new, sir? The rock wall? map that I got from the land office goes way, way, way back and it shows the existing wall being there at that time. And the white building you see is a workshop yeah. that okay. I put in. And so it's the, not a it's not a garage. No, it's not okay. a, it's not a garage. All right. I, I, I mean it, as someone said about three feet, it is about a three foot drop off to get back there. Yeah, he's got a pretty good eye, this Don Luciano yeah. guy. And it's calibrated. Yeah. You built the white shed? Yes, sir. American Steel did. Yeah. And basically, it's going to have the same type of roof, but instead of vertical, all the ribs are going to be going horizontal down the driveway. So well, the pitch of the roof, would that be the same? Pardon? The pitch of the roof? Yes, yes. Would that, be the that, same. So regardless of which way the ribs are going, you put a truss in across or the ribs well, in a horizontal I mean, when position. When the rain comes down, uh -huh. the rain just follows the ribs down towards Raymond Chase. And, and, and basically, my height posts are going to be about eight feet. And then the, the roof will overhang that about six inches, which comes right, and basically, as I say, there's no water going to be running off the edges because it's going to be running down the bead beams towards the street. I'm going to ask a, a sure. question. Sure. Did you ever consider doing the carport in front? That's my. I've got no place to put it in front. How about to the left? Well, the I mean, it, uh, other other than blocking my whole front of my house because it is a small house. Yeah. And you understand that she's got the same issue. She's right, got a I small got house. Same, I, got, <laughs> yeah. I got the same five foot issues there yeah, also. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for the owner? No? Is there anybody online that has a uh, reason to chime in on this particular case? If so, please hit star six on your phone, laptop, or TV. Star six. One more time, if you are interested in this particular case and want to say something about it, star six, please. Having heard none, we'll say that there is no. Justin? I had another question for staff. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how you're asking us to approve a legal nonconforming structure that's not fully on this person's property. So we're not really asking that you approve the portion that goes over outside his property just to approve the encroachment. Uh, again, that's why I, I, I stated, you know, that will be a civil matter between him and the other neighbor about that portion going into the neighbor's property. Uh, for right now, it's just about the encroachment uh, from that structure into the rear setback. So again, this, you know, we cannot approve 
whatever extends into the neighbors. Uh, that's something else to be, uh, uh, again, civil dispute between them. So restating that in, in my terms, if you would, is does Mrs. Trujillo have any um, legal right at this point for some kind of a fix on that property if we go ahead and assume the, the legalization so that she can proceed forward? So I, I just want to clarify uh, one thing about the encroachments into the neighbors. There, there are two at this moment. One for the rear portion of the building, of the rear structure. Okay. Uh, which um, and Mr. That's Sutherland on somebody called a studio. Yeah. So that goes into the rear, um, neighbor at the rear. And then there we have the, the encroachment of the overhang of the building into Ms. Uh, Trujillo's uh, property. So that there's two right now. Okay. So the rear, uh, again, you know, they, if, and that's why Mr. Hio, no, Mr. Sovalan, uh, mentioned, well, one of them, I can't remember which one, to be uh, honest. Uh, but they mentioned we, we requested them to, you know, the owner to uh, talk to the neighbors and ensure they're okay with, with the structure remaining as it is. It's been there for a while. Um, and then they mentioned, uh, Mr. Uh, Sovala mentioned the roof, the, the overhand encroaching into Ms. Trujillo uh, property. Uh, back then, uh, she, she allowed them to, to encroach. Uh, and that's probably because it was probably a roof or something uh, at that moment. Uh, at this moment, uh, and then again, going back to where I just uh, started with, we asked him to check with them to make sure that, you know, if they're okay with it, then the city may not have may have no issue uh, because it's been there existing. It's nothing new. If it's new, then we can't allow it. Um, but right now, it's, it's existing. Now, obviously, Mr. Hio doesn't has an issue with the new carport, and then with this existing overhang encroaches into her property. So basically, we cannot legalize the the overhang to stay. We can let it stay if they're okay with it. Uh, at this moment, Mr. Hio seems to have a, an issue with it. Uh, I just want to remind the board, you may uh, condition approval if you want. Um, that, that can be removed if you wanna move forward. Um, so basically, she's saying, you're saying, she can, what's overhang is her, she can go out there with a saw and cut that 12 or 14 inches off. Technically, it's yes, it's her property. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's I think that's probably Russell Ablin, assistant city attorney. I think whose property that is probably under dispute. That's her property? I think okay. whose property it is um, is a civil matter probably. I don't know. So you, sure. we're not real sure is. if the um, Meats and Browns are correct. Is that correct? Um, I, I, there's a lot of issues it looks like. All right, Kevin. Sure. About time you jumped in. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Chair, members of the board. Kevin Smith with Planning Inspections. Happy New Year to everyone. So again, um, as was mentioned by staff, the rock walls are not always along the property lines. Um, so a surveyor would be the one to determine where the property lines actually are. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Russell, but the Zoning Board of Adjustment, you're, for an application, your authority ends basically at the property lines. As this one goes beyond the property lines, that is a civil matter that they have to get resolved themselves. Either everyone's okay with it, sometimes they are, or not, which then that would have to get resolved through some other mechanism. So you can approve up to the zero lot line, pass that, that is a civil matter that they would have to get resolved themselves. But again, a surveyor would be the one who is officially saying these are where the property line starts and stops. And the rock wall is not, like I mentioned, is not 100% along the property line. Okay, so a surveyor would be able to, to, to uh, determine that. And then as, as Russell mentioned, then it's a, a, a property owner dispute between that, that overhang that exists. So the question then arises from us, um, do they have a current uh, property line 
survey? I don't know. Is this a site survey? Could be. That's the same thing that we have in here, it looks like. But you can see the stamp now, right? Yeah, yeah. it's cut off, no, but it, it's cut off, but it's it's the same, it's the same thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I may make a comment, uh, it seems to me a lot of, uh, at times there are um, situations like this that are brought to us and we're putting the cart before the horse. And uh, although the, the, the power of the zoning board is just to legalize um, uh, the zoning right. on a property, it, it seems to create at times like this a uh, legal issue for surrounding neighbors and, and, and I don't know how you, the rest of the board feels, but many times it's, it's quite uncomfortable to approve these when you know it's creating a further legal issue, whether it's civil uh, or whatever. And I, ju I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. I agree I with uh, Marcia and I I would propose a motion to deny this uh, staff's recommendation. I don't know if anybody agrees with I'm me. I'm going to second it. We have a first and a second. Any comments on that? And let's take a vote. The proposal or the motion on the floor is to deny the request as presented by the, by the city staff. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed to that? That motion carries then. So at this point, um, it's another step you guys have to take. We do not approve the recommended um, proposal. Thank you very much. Would you please uh, at least make sure that you get with both parties so that they can work their differences out. We'll probably see this back in our hands sooner than later. All right, let's go to the next issue. Next case, please. This is on um, 1213 East Missouri Avenue. Happy New Year. Uh, Andrew Sloan with Planned Inspections. Hey, Andrew. Item number two on the agenda is located, as you said, 1213 East, East Missouri Avenue. The applicant is requesting a special exception B of two or more non-conforming lots. And this is to legalize an existing professional office structure that encroaches in the C4 commercial zone district. Here the subject property is shown on the aerial imagery. The subject property is located along Missouri Avenue and, I and north of the I-10 freeway. The zoning district for the property, again, is C4 commercial. The site plan, it does depict the layout of the property. The structure also extends 10 feet into the required 10 feet rear setback for 2,738 square foot total encroachment, and you can see that in red. This is a front view of the subject property as seen from Missouri Avenue. This is a zoom in photo of the subject property. This is a view from the rear yard of the subject property. A view of the existing structure. A view from the alley as well. This is an aerial photographs that indicate there are three other properties on the same block, also with structures located along the rear yard setback that encroach also 10 feet. Planning Division has not received any communication in support or opposition. Staff does recommend approval of this special exception B request as the recommended encroachments are equal to the encroachments of at least three properties along uh, neighboring properties. 
And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. Um, any questions for um, Andrew Salom right now? From the board? No? All right. Is a representative or the owner here, Mr. Santiago Hernandez? Is Mr. Santiago Hernandez online at, if you are and you want to chime in, it's star six? Yeah, he should be online. Mr. Hernandez? Again, we're looking for the applicant for the property at 1213 East Missouri, item two on today's ZBA agenda. Star six, if you are online so that we can hear you. I don't see him uh, on the queue either, yeah, Mr. I don't, Chair. I don't hear him either, okay. Uh, is there anybody here to speak for or against this item in the general public or a neighbor or somebody? Again, if you are online and want to speak on this item, it is star six to unmute you. And one more time, if you are online and want to speak on this item, star six to unmute you. And just to let you know, Commissioner, the applicant uh, was um, had men mentioned that he wanted to um, do the do the virtual to attend virtually. Okay. Well, he's not on. So, at this point, Andrew, you've done all you can do. Let me ask a question: What what is there? What what business is there? It's a professional. It's going to convert to a professional office building. Office building. Okay. And I see that there's a cotton on-ramp. I'm a little lost on the over overhead. Um, can you go back to the overhead? Just on the access room, I think. Yeah. Okay. So. Every in there is Commercial, yeah. Access to the yeah. So the Missouri is really on the north end of the freeway. Yeah, that's gateway. Gateway, right? It turns into Missouri. Missouri yeah. Freeway, yeah. Okay. So I understand that. All right, uh, board, do you have any questions? Do you want to move forward on this? I'll entertain a motion to approve based Second. on recommendations of the staff, right? All right, we have a motion to approve on the recommendation of staff. Is there any opposition to that or any comment? Let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Andrew, great job. All right, we have our Next item on the agenda, the minutes, right? Am I right? I think so. Yes. Board members, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes if you've read them. Make a not, um, motion to approve. Are we okay? On, are we okay on everybody that were present on this date? Uh, was I not here? I was here. I was here, right? Yeah. Okay, because there shows nine present for that, but my name's not on there. Is it? Oh, there it is. It's under vice chairman. Sorry. Jeez. Okay, chairman. Thank you very much. All right. So we have a motion to approve first and a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else that we need to discuss? I think at the back of the page two of 16, you're gonna see that uh, we've decided to approve our future meetings so far. Are we gonna meet up here most of the time, do you think? Again, Kevin Smith, the plan inspections. That's my understanding. All boards and committees with the city um, have been moved up to this location. Um, city council is only one meeting currently in council chambers. I'm gonna have to talk to Oscar about this. So uh, again, that's that's currently that. <laughs> that's the thought process as of now. Yeah, as of okay, now. they got their own issues to deal with, so very much so. Um, anything else that we need to cover? Mr. City Attorney, Kevin, anybody? No? We're bueno. I think I'll we're entertain good. a motion to adjourn. A uh, motion to adjourn. Mayor second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Donna.